So this week, as we near the end of our series in Christology, I want to bring us a little highlight reel of some of the thoughts and the work of a fellow called St. John of Damascus. Now, St. John was writing around about the 600s. He has become known as the really the primary theologian of the Eastern Orthodox Church. The book in particular where he write some of his most beautiful theology is called the great exposition of the orthodox faith and he really gets into some stunning theology to try and articulate the beauty and the complexity of the life of our lord the being of jesus christology proper now when he's writing he's got two main tensions that he has to deal with on the one hand there's the heresies of nestorius and on the other hand there's the heresies of eutychus so let me just remind us of those nestorius when he was speaking of the life of jesus would have the human nature and the divine nature of jesus be so separate that really the only conclusion was that they were two different people, they were two different entities. And so when you look at our Lord, you can almost see two people. You can see the human Jesus and you can see the divine Jesus, but they are always kept somewhat distinct or very distinct in the theology of Nestorius. And that wasn't acceptable to St. John and that hasn't become Orthodox theology. On the other hand, there's Eutychus and he uh, proposed a blending theology where you basically pour in the divinity and pour in the humanity and you get this thing called the person of Jesus who is fully divine and fully human but in a blended way and again St John said no that's not acceptable because he wasn't blended that's not what happened he didn't create a new third type of uh, subsistence but he he was the one person who had two natures so he has this amazing challenge on his hands to try and articulate the life of Jesus, the being of Jesus, in a way that is understandable and yet accurate by saying that, that the divine nature and the human nature of Jesus, his, his godness and his humanness, they are interwoven and they are inseparable and yet they are distinct. The divine nature never becomes human and the human nature never becomes divine. Um, and yet, in the one person of Jesus, he is the human being who is divine. And, and the other part of what he says, which is really interesting, is that, that the humanity and the divinity of Jesus, they never alter each other. They don't change each other to become something different than what they truly are. Perfect divinity and perfect humanity, that's what Jesus is. And his divinity never stops being 100% divine and his humanity never stops being 100% human. But they, as it were, bless each other as they integrate into each other in the person of Jesus, being both unmixed, unmingled, um, and yet inseparable. And this is where St. John really walks the thinnest of tight ropes. He says that our Lord is a compound of divine and human. Now a compound is something that we would normally say is a mixture. You put one thing and another thing together, you mix them up, that's your new compound. But he says, our Lord is a compound and yet is unmixed and unmingled. They, they are inseparably bonded together, whilst at the same time remaining fully human and fully divine in the one real person of Jesus. And that's the mystery, right? That is the beauty where he gets as far into the light as he can and then it's almost like he can go no further because the, the mystery and the wonder of our Lord is too much. He cannot be fully explained. And yet St. John tries his very best to express that. It's brilliant theology. It's beautiful. And what it does is it really brings into clearer focus what's being taught in the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews, one of the strongest presentations is of Jesus as our high priest. And a high priest is somebody who would lay a hold of God and lay a hold of community and bring them together. That's the job of the high priest is to bring them together within his ministry. Well now we have, through the theology of Hebrews and also articulated by St. John, we would have the understanding that Jesus doesn't so much bring God and bring community or bring humanity together, but rather he is that. He is the bringing together. He is the coming together. He is the union of divinity and humanity. He doesn't have to even really do anything high priestly 
just in his simply being the high priest, humanity is in divinity now. We have been brought together. We have been made one. We have been unified in Christ. That's the beauty of the book of Hebrews. That's a stunning claim that's made there, is that in Christ now, humanity has found its place in God as Christ. And so we, by faith, now receive that grace. We receive that invitation, that promise that we might experience something of the Beatitudes and the graces of our Lord as we realize that humanity truly has been embedded in divinity, in Jesus himself. He is the incarnation. He is the bringing together. He is the high priest ministry. Um, and it's just his very being that does that that brings us together, that humanity is now unmediated within the life of God and God's life is unmediated towards humanity in the very being of Jesus. So lofty and beautiful thoughts from the Bible and from St. John of Damascus that we can ponder and be nourished by helps us to pray, helps us to look at our lives and look at the world and be encouraged that God is truly for us and with us and in us and through us and he has brought us into himself in Christ. So until next time, blessings, peace.